Now here's your host, Tom Dorado. Hello again, everyone, and welcome to the Eddie Sutton Show. The Cowboys, ranked number 22 in the country, are on a timely four-game win streak. Jumped out 2-0 in the Big 12, 10-3 on the year. Obviously, since we visited last TV-wise, we've had some good times. We have had good times. We defeated UNLV, uh, then Southeast Missouri, uh, then opened Big 12 play with a uh, win over Kansas State at home, and then our recent uh, victory over Texas A&M. And again, the Cowboys are going to stay on the road this week. We'll talk about the game at Baylor this weekend. Coming off a big road win at A&M, we've got a lot to catch up on, and we're going to get right to it after this opening timeout. We are back, and welcome back to the show. Eddie, we have a lot of basketball still left to be played, but I really think when we look back on these four games that we talked about in the tees, we're going to look back to perhaps the barometer-type games for the rest of the season. Well, anytime you uh, play close games and you win, you got to be happy, and this uh, really got us started with the win over uh, UNLV. I thought uh, uh, our team, the last five minutes of the game, played extremely well. They, they're very talented. Uh, we had just come off of a loss up at, uh, in Omaha against Creighton University. And it was just before Christmas at a time when uh, a lot of times young men are thinking about other things besides basketball. But uh, Glenn and Alexander and uh, Joe, uh, Desmond, Pete really uh, made some big shots. And, and really, I think one thing, we grew up a little bit, we closed the game. Mm -hmm. We played extremely well in the last few minutes of the ball game. And that got us started. Then we came back to Southeast Missouri, uh, and uh, we struggled in all those games, but we won. And uh, we're still not playing offensively the way we need to play. I, I think defensively we've gotten better uh, the last four games, but in order for us to beat good ball clubs, not that all the teams that we have remain are good ball clubs, but to get out there and beat it. Uh, one of the contenders in our conference, we're going to have to play much better offensively. I think if there is a common thread amongst these four games that you're going to see here this week is the fact that challenge down the stretch, the guys who had to make the plays at the end came up and made them. Well, we were uh, behind in, uh, in all three of those uh, games you mentioned, and yet we were able to rally. There's a special play where we back screen and a great pass by uh, Doug to uh, Peterson. I think Doug had 17 or 18 mm -hmm. assists in that this game. game. Right. Uh -huh. There's another nice pass. This game, unlike maybe the next, the next one against Southeast Missouri and certainly against A&M, we seem to be a lot more active in this ball game. Much more active, much more enthusiastic, playing the game with, with uh, a passion. Seems like to me that uh, we've been stagnant at the offensive end, just haven't been alert, been uh, cautious, hesitant, whatever you want to. As a result, our offense hasn't been very good. Yeah, there's a guy, you're going to see a little bit more from Desmond later on in the show, but this is a guy who continues, even though he admits that he's not playing as well as he can, he continues to do the little things away from scoring that help win. Well, he's a terrific rebounder, and uh, he's so active, and uh, no one plays the game any harder than, than Desmond. And you saw uh, us beat uh, UNLV 81-69. And this was a tough team right here. You said it at the outset that you should not take these guys for granted. Very, very well coached ball club. Gary uh, uh, used to play at Missouri and uh, has coached to several places, uh, but a very good basketball team. And their, their level, they'll be very uh, strong. They play in the, in the uh, I think it's the Ohio Valley mm -hmm. Conference That's they right. play in. And uh, they'll be one of the two or three teams probably that will challenge for the championship. Great pass. I believe as we speak, Doug is leading the nation in assists per game, around nine. The Cowboys were certainly challenged here and had to play. These guys made you play to the end. Well, they could shoot the ball. Uh, they played good, solid defense. Uh, they were well, like I said, they were well coached. They had a great uh, game plan. And uh, we just had to fight from behind. We got down in double figures. And, well, that's some kind of catch by uh, Frederick. Uh, Johnson. Whoa, he was almost under Just the to basket. catch the ball was remarkable, but yet to get it up in the basket. He's uh, making a lot of progress, and uh, he's been giving us a lot of quality time. Could we see him start someday soon? I think he's got a chance to uh, start in place of Alex Weber. Uh, it doesn't make any difference who starts. Right. It's uh, 
you know, how many minutes you get in the game. And those two guys pretty much have been holding down that, that center position. You could see we're trailing by two and certainly uh, have your attention and the players' attention at halftime. Well, is it, that's what we've been telling uh, Desmond. If we can catch the ball down low, sometimes he has a tendency to, to do, try to do too much. And he's such a quick jumper that he can get up over the defender before the guy can react. And uh, he's been doing a lot better job. There's Doug driving down the baseline. Another good assist. You know, I did a radio deal with Desmond uh, two games ago, and we discussed that very thing that he understands that he don't, he no longer just go into the hole as soon as he has the basketball. For whatever reason, he's waiting, hesitating, giving the defense maybe a chance to recover and not taking advantage of the quickness he has. Well, sometimes he tries to, to go away too fast, as you mentioned, and he, and he loses balance, he, he's out of control. There's another great catch, nice pass. And, Pretty tough Came from shot Joe. Right here, huh? <laughs> Real tough. Pete, you know, uh, last week was voted the uh, most valuable player in the Big 12 Conference and certainly deserved, deserved it the way he'd played. Opening uh, conference play, and when you open conference play, I don't care what conference it is, the intensity level rises. And it did that game, no question. Kansas State came in and felt like this was just as important a game for them. They get off to a good start, they go a leg up. We've been very fortunate against the Wildcats the, the, the last few years, but uh, I knew this game was going to be tough. And K-State's very good uh, because they'd beaten some quality ball clubs coming in. They're just, they've got five seniors. They've added a couple of junior college players. And uh, uh, Tom Asbury has got an excellent ball club. I think one of the three or four best teams in the conference. Well, this game was push and shove, number to number, tough to get a shot most of the afternoon. Pretty physical, if you want to put it that way. And we get down. I think our fans thought the game was over. We were down 15 points in the second half, and that hasn't happened in the nine years I've been here uh, very often, especially at home. Miraculous comeback, no question. But all of a sudden, uh, we caught fire. We ran some spatial scoring plays. Great play there with Glenn and Alexander. And uh, the crowd got into the game. That's when Pete's at his best, when he's active, driving the basketball to the the basket, rebounding in this game. He led us in scoring and he also uh, picked up, uh, I think, uh, seven or eight rebounds. Sometimes he has a tendency just to want to hang around the perimeter and shoot jump shots. And in our game over at AM, that's what happened. He shot 18 times and never got to the free throw line. And that's an indication he just wasn't driving the basketball. That has been a tendency all year, though, has it not? I mean, the, just to kind of hang on the arc because we have so many guys who can shoot the three, and sometimes they fail to put it on the floor and take it to the rack. Well, the reason we want look, right here, that's what you're looking for. Uh, Joe drove into the heart of the defense, forced a help situation, found Frederick Johnson underneath. And when you put the ball on the floor, you get in there and force the defense to react, and you get the ball to open people for open shots. And at the same time, you get to go to the free throw line. And, and we're a good free throw shooting basketball team. One thing, uh, we have hit more free throws than the other the team, I think, the other team has shot. And that was a perfect example, not that play, but one that passed to Johnson, that uh, the fact is Joe got in the paint and Dyes had to come out to challenge to make sure he didn't have a clear bad path to the basket and Frederick was wide open because of it. It, se it seems so easy when we look at it on the show here. There's a great shot by Glenn and Alexander. He's really uh, what an addition. helped our ball club since he uh, became eligible at semester. The fact that he wasn't feeling just 100% down at A&M probably made a difference there as well. well he had a touch of the flu and uh, he's been a little under the weather all week. He can bury it from the corner when they get it to him. These guys just would not go away. Well, they fought. We had a hard time containing that young man right there. They tie it up, send it into overtime, and the Cowboys, again, what'd you tell them when you came in there? Obviously, you felt good about it. You did, is that the play you drove up there, a little trajectory, <laughs> no trajectory you shot? I think the uh, big guy upstairs was on our side on that <laughs> shot. That wasn't what you're looking for. It went in. That's all that makes any difference. There's what you're talking about. Get to the free throw line. We got three or four guys who can almost like money in the bank there. That's what we got. Defensively, I, I said we've improved, but we're still having a hard time containing dribblers. And when somebody does beat us, uh, we're a little slow in reacting and giving assistance or help. 
So that's an area that we've just got to constantly improve on. And the other area defensively, we've got to do a better job keeping the ball out of the heart of the defense. Here we are, first Beautiful big new game play. Yeah. You know, the Texas A&M played in G. Riley White for so many years, and now they have this beautiful arena. And I think this will be a great asset for their program. I know uh, young men and young women want to go someplace where you have good facilities, and this is a great, great facility. It wasn't necessarily a home court advantage for the Aggies, although when it got tight down the end, now you can hear those 3,000 fans pretty good. Not like you would have been G. Raleigh White, though. Reveille was still there, though, I might you add. You know, Reveille, Reveille was would not have that. missed your appearance for anything. <laughs> Great. Uh, I guess Reverly was uh, shagging uh, at the halftime, wasn't it? When yeah. Frisbees. Frisbees. Yeah. yeah. Got up there pretty high off the ground. Had a pretty good vertical jump there. Now here's Pete putting it on, creating his own shot. We're so much better when we're running. You know, this is a good transition basketball team, and uh, I thought in the game with AM we were really hesitant. I mean, we just. This we, was a game, boy, four times, five times, we had a chance to blow it open, and we they looked it. like they were expecting it too. They'd get a bucket, we'd get turned it over, and they'd be right back to within two, and it was that way all night. We got up five or six points several times and just couldn't break the game. There's a special scoring play, what we call fade, good screen, and uh, Joe knocked the shot down. There's another one. That's Pete. You're gonna see down the stretch, some guys who struggled but came up big down the stretch, in particular Joe Atkins, who was in the middle of about three big plays. They were running one of your favorite defenses yeah. there, triangle and two, and uh, Montanati knocked down about a 15-footer. That's exactly where you wanted to attack it, too. That wasn't exactly the tightest and or most aggressive triangle and two I've ever seen. I wouldn't have put up with that. Well, Here's there's a, a great pass by Joe Atkins, and that was uh, Alex's only basket, but that was a big basket, put us up at three points. This was a little scary here, but Pete got a piece of that one. We did a horrible job on the defensive boards in this ball game. Uh, we allowed them 15 uh, offensive rebounds. That's something when we play Baylor this weekend, we've got to make darn sure we do a better job because uh, they they've played Kansas earlier this week right to the end. I think it was a four-point game. So there's no easy games in the Big 12. I mean, I have never seen the conference so wide open. I think that there's probably as many as five teams could win the league, and the other seven teams, believe me, on their home court, they can beat you. Makes it great for the fans. Tough on the coaches, That's no right. question. You know, this young man is literally taking his game to the next level. We're going to feature the best of Desmond Mason on this week's Off the Court feature. It's all coming up next. You know, we all know by now that Desmond Mason can do some incredible things on a basketball court. He also continues to improve his total game, getting it done on both ends of the floor. But make no mistake about one thing, this special talent still likes to spend a lot of time above the rim.
That'll bring a smile to your face. It brings a lot of smiles to our fans. I know that. You know, I've coached so many uh, wonderful uh, players in uh, my coaching career. I don't believe I've ever had an athlete who is so explosive as far as being able to jump uh, like uh, you saw in that film right there. I mean, he's an amazing guy. Let me give you some numbers. 25 of Desmond's 84 field goals this year have been dunks. He now has 48 career blocks, 92 career steals. He's quite a talent. He gets it done on both ends of the floor. Uh, he's one of the best players in our conference, and, and he's still improving. I think that's the thing that uh, is going to make him a great player. He, he hasn't got satisfied with his game. He's still out there working harder than anybody we have on the, on the team. Well, we're going to look at the notebook in another conference road game. That's all coming up when the Eddie Sutton Show continues in a moment. Hi, this is Chad Bratton. I'm from Stillwater, Oklahoma. I'd like to welcome you back to the Eddie Sutton Show. Uh, so now back to Coach and Tom. Oh, we are back. Let's get right to the notebook. And everybody wants to know about Big Roy's progress. Tell us about Big Roy. You know, Big Roy checked in at uh, 425 pounds. And uh, Dan Austin, our uh, strength and conditioning coach has uh, gotten him down below 400 now, but he still needs to lose about 50 or 60 pounds before he's going to be ready to play the, for the Cowboys. You know, Dan told me he has such a great attitude, though. You would think this is something he really wants to get done. I think he does. He's a wonderful young man. He's, uh, he's just going to have to correct his eating habits, but he's got a chance, once he loses all that weight, to be a very good basketball player. He's got marvelous soft hands. He can shoot the basketball. He's a good passer. Uh, you know, he's so big, he sets vicious screens. But uh, right now he doesn't run very well and he doesn't jump very well because he's overweight. I wish you hadn't looked at me when you said eating habits. <laughs> Don't be glancing over here. Big 12 is our next item, and we alluded to it before. Great conference as far as the fans are concerned. You're not going to know what's going to happen, but the coaches, well, they're going to have another year of maybe a few more gray hairs. Well, you know, in the 90s, uh, we tied Kansas for a league championship. Missouri won outright and other than that the Jayhawks have won it every year no one else has won it I think for the first time during that period there's probably as many as four or five teams could win the league championship so it is a wide open affair uh, it's going to be great for the fans because every night it's going to be a, a very close ball game. A number of teams have jumped out 2-0 and including Oklahoma State, Oklahoma, Texas, uh, Missouri, who will leave Kansas so we've got four or five teams in there at 2-0 and obviously too early to get a trend but the scores appear they're going to be dog, especially when you're on the road, they're going to be close ball games. Well, those teams that aren't good enough to win the uh, conference are still good enough to knock you off, just like Texas A&M. We beat them. Uh, they'll beat somebody down in College Station because they're good enough to do that. Baylor is a team that we're going to be uh, playing here uh, uh, this weekend. So uh, that's the thing. In order to win a league, you have to win the games you should win. And then uh, against people that are equal with you, then you have to go out there and split with them. And... Uh, that's why uh, every time you go out there, you've got to be mentally and, and uh, prepared to, to meet a, a tough opponent. We call our next item in the notebook the big move, a big move. <laughs> you got the suitcases packed this week. Oh, gosh, I tell you, it's going to be wonderful when Gallagher-Iba is completed, but these next year, next year and a half, uh, it's going to be tough because uh, we're moving over to Cordell Hall along with the football staff, and the remainder of the coaches are scattered all over our campus. and. Uh, uh, it, it's going to be a unique facility. I, I tell you, you know, I, I get more excited uh, when I see uh, and talk to the architect about what we have uh, coming. But for a while, it is going to be uh, a little uh, rough for everybody. In fact, even when the game on game night, it's going to be tough for fans to get in because they're going to build a big fence mm -hmm. around Gallagher Island. In the time that we have left, a minute or so, Baylor coming up. You may mention of that. How about 66, 62? Kansas wins by four over Baylor. That's enough to put it into perspective. Baylor has uh, a group of uh, wonderful athletes. Uh, they're probably one of the most athletic teams that we'll face. So uh, we'll have to go down there, and one of the things that we must do is do a better job on the boards. And then next week it's Bedlam, and we have the groundbreaking ceremony mm -hmm. uh, that same day to uh, kick off uh, gallagher Iba renovation. Well, that's all the time we have for this week's show. We appreciate you being with us. For Eddie Sutton, our entire crew here at Educational Television Services, Tom Dorado. Goodbye, everybody.